Okay, so if we take a look at this example, let's say the company wants to either, they have two areas to improve, either upgrade their website or spend money on B2B portal, business to business. When they purchase materials, some of the machinery from other business, they can do this online, the B2B portal. So assuming that for both projects they're spending $240,000, meaning if they choose either one of them, they're spending this dollar amount. But in terms of the return they're getting for B2B portal, every single year they're getting $60,000. Second year is $60,000, third year is $60,000. For website, they're getting $80,000. So in the first glance, it seems like this one is more attractive than the other, right? Because if you use the initial investment dollar amount divided by the expected annual cash inflow, you're getting four for the B2B project. So you need to spend four years to cover that initial $240,000. For the second one, you're getting $80,000 for every single year, so you're only spending three years to get the money back. What do you think would be the potential disadvantage for using this method? So I'll give you a hint, B2B portal, the lifetime of the asset, you assume that it can be used for six years. For the website upgrade, it's only good for three years. After three years, perhaps you need to do another upgrade based on the current technology advancement speed. So basically, if you invest in the website upgrade, of course you're getting your money back in a quicker time frame, in a shorter time frame, three years. But after that, you're not getting anything else. You just covered the $240,000 and that's it. But for this project here, you're covering it in a longer time frame, four years, but after that, you're getting $120,000 more. So you not just cover the initial cost, you're also getting two more because it can be used for two additional years. Okay, so the downside of using simply just the payback period is that it doesn't consider any profitability that you're getting after you cover the initial cost because you're simply just comparing four years against three years. Okay, so this method is more elementary. It's usually just used as a screening process in the beginning of identifying which project is better than the other. It's only a screening process to determine which one takes a longer time frame to cover the initial cost, which one actually covers the cost in a shorter time frame. But it does not consider the profitability after that. Okay, now this is a case that it gives you an equal time frame of return. So typically for some of the furnitures or machinery that runs on a very routine basis, usually you may assume that it gives you a certain rate of return every single year is the same. But what if some of the things that some of the machinery use depreciation on units of production? If you heavily use it, it gives you more return. So then we may estimate every single year the return rate is different. So assuming that there's another project, you may assume in a Z80 portal and it gives you every single year a different rate of return. First year, 100,000. Second year, 80,000. Third year, 50,000. So then how do you calculate the payback period? So in this case here, we want to accumulate the savings every single year. Initial, initial cost, for example, is still $240,000. You're spending this money on this Z80 portal. But since every single year it gives you a different rate of return, you can't just divide it by a particular random number, right? So what you do here is you'll focus on the accumulation of the savings. So first year gives you $100,000, that's the profit. Second year you have 80 more. So you add that with the 100,000, you get $180,000 after the second year. What about after the third year? 230,000. So that is getting close to the initial cost. So by the end of the third year, you're accumulating savings $230,000. Fourth year, it already went over the initial cost, $280,000, right? So it's somewhere between three and four years, you're getting the initial cost back, $240,000.
So you know three years is a definite period that you'll need to use because up to three years you cover 230,000 and you have 10,000 left. So that $10,000 divided by the fourth year's cost, fourth year's revenue that you're generating, $50,000, you're gonna determine the remaining period is 0.2 years. So about two to three months. So this is a case for unequal cash inflows. Again, for unequal cash inflows, you'll be accumulating what is the total info that you're getting to figure out what is the payback period. Because every single year it could be a different level. So you can't just divide it by a certain number. You accumulate the cost and figure the two numbers that is closest to the initial cost. So the two years that is closest to the initial cost is third and fourth. You know for a fact that you definitely need to spend three years to at least get 230000 Then you have 10000 more to cover. That $10,000 will be covered in the fourth year when you generate 50000 more. So the payback period for the remaining is 0.2 years. So all together, it takes you 3.2 to uh, 3 .2 years to cover the whole cost, 240000 And what if I tell you that the initial cost is $330,000? Then what would be the payback period here? So you will find the two numbers that is closest to that initial cost, which is the fourth year and the fifth year, right? So you know for a fact that at least four years, so now the remaining part would be $330,000 minus the $320,000, then divided by $40,000, the fifth year. So this part would be $10,000 divided by 40,000, right? So it would be something like 2.5. Okay, if it's $370,000, then you'll be picking the fifth year and the seventh year, uh, fifth year and the sixth year. So at least be five years, and then you have $10,000 divided by $30,000 to figure out the payback period. So whatever the initial cost is for unequal cash flows, you can't divide it by a certain number. Figure the two accumulated costs that is closest to the initial cost. So you definitely need to know that you have at least four years to spend in order to cover the cost, and then you have additional cost. It's between, oh, sorry, yes. It's between five and six, I aimed at the, yes. It's five plus the additional, yes. Yeah, so it's still divided by $40,000 because the six here is $40,000 here. So this would be 5.25. Okay, thank you. Any questions so far for this method? So this usually, since it doesn't consider the profitability part, usually it's just used at the first step to screen out some of the projects that takes a, too long of a time to cover the initial cost. Okay, but for the ones that are closest in the periods, oftentimes managers need to use other methods together to determine which one is more ideal.